fabrications throbs in a lot of people's memories as one of the most atmospheric and thrilling dances. It's my favorite Cunningham dance of all time. It, it just, it really is. I was asked to revive the dance for the 50th anniversary. It was actually the first complete dance that I ever staged. What became obvious from looking at Merce's notes was that he thought in terms of groups, solos, duets, trios, quartets, quintets, and sextets. Each section was a combination of two groups. The dance opens with a duet and a quartet. The next section is a sextet and a trio, and what happens is that duet and that quartet join together and become the sextet, and then a trio crosses through the back. And that's how it, the, the structure it continues on like that. And that was all determined by chance. Merce seems to have identified each group by a set of hexagrams. So I'm making this up a bit. Hexagram one through 10 was a solo, and 11 through whatever would have been the duet. And when he threw the I Ching, he came up with a pair of hexagrams for each section, and that told him what groupings it would have. It created a score, in a sense, a structural score. Merce had a gamut of 64 phrases, and he also used chance to determine which phrase each group would be doing. The movement had a vitality and a bigness to it that was very satisfying. It came at a time in the company when there was a very large priority on covering space, being rhythmically clear, and there was a kind of a metric push behind the dancing, and so I think of it as a dance that waltzed. My part was also very different because I was probably like 25 at the time and I was going to do uh, Merce's part. My strategy was not to have Cedric try to imitate what Merce as a 68-year-old man was able to do, but for me to look at what Merce is doing and to have Cedric fulfill that as fully as he could as a man in his 20s. It was not at all about doing it like Merce. Uh, we're going to fail 100% if we're going that direction. In working with Cedric, I tried to glean those phrases, teach those phrases, and then have Cedric inhabit them. And then Merce worked with him, and I think pushed them even further. One of the peculiar features of fabrications is, is it has these episodes which he refers to as scenes. And so when he made his outline of the dance and started putting the time next to it, you would see all these sections, and then there would be scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four, scene five. He actually wrote narrative descriptions of what was going to happen. There's two dancers who run out and they lay down on the floor. And they hold there forever, just like, you know, this couple just hanging out in the park. And then they get up and they start doing these explosive jumps and leaps. Both of them were like the embodiment of fresh young love. One of the scenes really for, I think as dancers stood out for us. In fact, I can still remember being in that studio in Minneapolis and watching it happen. It was a part that I loved and that had a uh, very strong emotional valence to it. Um, in fact, when we did a section of that dance for an AIDS benefit, I believe in 1986, that moment was included in this concert that was uh, an homage both to lost dancers and just the whole issue of raising money to help people who were sick. And that one is labeled sorrow. It's one of the nine permanent emotions from Hindu aesthetics, and it was the dark ones that were used for this piece. The costumes and the backdrop were by Dove Bradshaw, who was then one of the um, artistic advisors for the company. The men are in silk pants and shirts, and the women are in silk dresses. Presumably that is one of the sources of the title Fabrications, this fabric. Although the way I've heard Merce describe it is that it was fabrications in both senses of the word to put pieces together to make a whole or to concoct or even lie. I don't know what that means exactly, but I find it very um, intriguing.